They're young and rich with millions of followers, giving them unprecedented power over the hugely lucrative YouTube beauty community. A lot of creators can look at raking in millions of dollars. I can make enough money where I don't need to work at Mac anymore. YouTube beauty gurus have also had a huge impact on the mainstream beauty markets. The beauty community was pretty much dominated by white and Asian women. I started showing how to make a nude lip work for dark skin. But as the stakes and the paydays in the YouTube beauty space got bigger for one of the first mega influencers, Jeffree Star, friendship turned to competition, giving rise to epic online battles dubbed Dramageddon 1 and 2. I got horrible messages. I got death threats. I got kill yourself comments. Dramageddon really shows what can happen when friendship, gossip, and money is all mixed together with secrets and lies. As beautiful as this community seems, the world's most powerful beauty influencers lift the veil on YouTube's epic dramas and reveal the dark side of beauty. Everybody loves a good misery story. I'm not gonna lie, people love to see somebody get dragged. <laughs> this is True Hollywood Story. Pretty ugly, money, rumors, and lies. When the YouTube platform started back in 2005, it was simply a space that attracted a young audience looking for a way to express their authentic selves. One of the awesome things about YouTube is that anybody can do it. You, from your bedroom at home, you can sit down with your phone and record a video and you can upload it. I was one of the first people to join YouTube. I got drawn into YouTube from a MySpace. Like, it was so easy to share videos. Like, you can embed it in your page, you could share a link. Hey, what's up? This is Trisha. I'm super fun, super bubbly, have many talents, but one hidden talent. I'm a rapper. In 2006, YouTube added the Partners program, enabling creators to receive financial gain for their videos. You can monetize your content through ads placed throughout your video. Many creators also see finances come in through sponsored posts, sponsored videos. The ease of use and ability for content creators to make money doing what they loved was a game changer, spawning channels for gaming, DIY, and beauty which quickly became one of the most popular categories on the platform. In the beginning, it was just so innocent. There was no competition. It was just the, for the love of makeup. The beauty community started with tutorials. For my highlight, I, which is super glittery, I used Fenty Beauty's Kilowatt Highlighter in Trophy Wife. Showing you specifically how to do makeup, and it was all about just purely makeup. <laughs> As the wholesome beauty community on YouTube expanded, more influencers flocked to the platform, some eager to provide content for underrepresented communities. Jackie Ina was one of the first. Ina started her channel in 2009 and quickly amassed more than 3 million followers, raking in hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. The beauty community was pretty much dominated by white and Asian women. When I started my channel, I started showing how to make a nude lip work for dark skin. I started showing how to make, you know, contouring work for dark skin. People didn't know those things. It was literally like very tutorial driven. Jackie Ina has definitely been an integral voice in championing for women of color and for holding brands accountable for their launches and for their service to consumers in the beauty space. Ina wasn't the only early influencer looking to expand inclusivity on the platform. Manny MUA, a former Mac sales associate and brand ambassador for Maybelline, was another early advocate for diversity. I started my channel when I was working at Mac, and one of my first videos I ever uploaded was like my foundation routine. I'm actually gonna be using the Marc Jacobs foundation powder in 360. I got it from Mark. The Mar these guys, okay guys, I'm not, I'm not, I'm cheap. Like I'm not, I don't have a lot of money. So these guys, I have the Mark Jacobs stuff. It's from Mark, I got it for free. Like I got it for free. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like this could really take off for me. I can make enough money where I don't need to work at Mac anymore. Manny MUA quickly shot to success. And in 2017 was the only man named to People Magazine's most beautiful list. Fans flocked to their favorite gurus on the platform leading to an explosion of subscribers for Jackie Ina and Manny MUA. 
the era of the beauty influencer had officially arrived. As influencers took off, the race to become top dog was on. One of the earliest megastars of the YouTube beauty community was unfiltered makeup master Jeffree Star. Hey bitches, it's Jeffree Star. Well, Jeffree Star is, is a character that I made, so I like changed my name and I just kind of like, this is who I am now. Jeffree Star started out on MySpace doing some music and he was huge. He had this I don't care attitude about him that I think people were really, really drawn to. Honestly, I kind of hate everyone. By 2008, Star's following on MySpace exploded. He regularly received more than 50,000 comments on his posts, which brought him to the attention of fellow ascending makeup star, burlesque performer, and tattoo artist Kat Von D, who helped catapult Jeffrey even further up the ladder of fame. A lot of Jeffree Star's tattoos were done by Kat Von D. A lot of people knew that Kat Von D and Jeffree Star were friends. When MySpace went down in 2009, he started posting makeup videos on YouTube. So his followers just went from MySpace to YouTube and he just grew massively. The look I'm gonna do for you guys today is a very signature Jeffree Star look. I have been wearing bright blue shadow ever since I can remember and it's just one of my go-to colors. In 2010, Star's notoriety in the beauty community grew, but he was getting attention for much more than his makeup tutorials. Well, there's only one way to see if it works. And for $32, bitch, we better get a really good mist out of here. He played into the anti-beauty guru in the sense of like, I don't care about being brand safe. I don't care about being family friendly. I don't care about being vulgar. I don't care about doing like drugs on my channel. Like, what, what were we smoking? What is that? Oh my God, it's um, a hybrid marijuana full THC pen. Jeffrey's the one and only person who is loud, outspoken, and will trash very big brands. He has no filter, that's for sure. This is probably, or if not, the worst mascara I've ever tried in my entire life and on this channel. Jeffrey's uncensored mouth created a ton of drama with other beauty gurus on the platform. He's done a lot of horrible things. Just a lot of mean girl behavior. People either love Jeffree Star or they hate Jeffree Star. There's no gray area there whatsoever. Coming up, old clips of him using the N-word and other derogatory terms began to circulate. And later, when two mega influencers fall out, drama ensues. I would not be where I am today without Jeffrey. If I can go back and fix things with Jeffrey, I really, really would. By 2010, the world of the wholesome YouTube beauty guru had given way to a new order where the pressure to attain fame and grab the cash that came with it was creating an environment of cutthroat competition. Many successful YouTube creators earn hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars because of these large followings and large audiences. More money becomes more financial gain and responsibility for these creators, and the stakes do grow higher. After being part of the beauty community for five years, Jeffree Star had earned millions of dollars, enough to launch his own makeup line in 2014. Star was officially a powerhouse brand, rivaling some of beauty's biggest companies with sold out liquid lipsticks and coveted eyeshadow palettes. He started with four different lipsticks and has grown his brand into an empire. By 2015, with money pouring in and his video views averaging tens of millions, Star also became the de facto queen bee of the most powerful YouTube beauty guru clique, which included Laura Lee, Nikita Dragon, Gabriel Zamora, and Manny MUA. I truly don't think that anyone can be prepared for fast success. You're getting millions of views on things, Nikita Dragon shot to fame as one of the first openly transgender beauty gurus on YouTube, amassing millions of followers. Don't forget, breathe fire, my dragons. Nikita's close friend, Gabriel Zamora, was climbing the YouTube success ladder when he became the first male makeup artist signed by mega beauty influencer Michelle Fon's Ipsy Beauty Community. Even though you're doing a light glam, it really seals everything together, so I definitely recommend it. And Southern Belle Laura Lee went from posting makeup tutorials that gained her millions of followers 
to launching her own makeup brand. People really trusted her. And they said, well, if Laura Lee likes this concealer, that means it's the best concealer. Now I'm gonna add the thinnest possible coat of foundation. I am talking super, super thin because we're gonna be using so much more product all over our face. Laura Lee and Manny MUA had a pretty established friendship with Jeffree Star. They were all friends. They did a ton of collaboration videos together. They were always on each other's channels. They were cross promoting. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So we have a special Hi. guest. We have Jeffree here back Hi everyone. again. When you meet your tribe, it's just, it's like lightning strikes. Is it on? It's rolling. Oh my God. Oh my God. In late 2015, these top beauty influencers realized the value in doubling up, combining forces to attract even more subscribers, which translated to bigger revenues. And the YouTube collab was born. Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you guys, of course, for being on my channel. Okay. You guys are so sweet. I'm so happy like that we did this. I was so stoked. Sometimes your team will get reached out by someone else's team, and they're like, hey, we would love for your client to collaborate with our client. And then we meet, we collaborate, and we end up being friends. We'll be doing more videos together because- We are. They're just There's a lot to do out there. There is. But by 2016, after more than a year of friendship, this powerhouse beauty clique had mysteriously fizzled, and Star began trading veiled insults with his former collaborators. You're about to see a lot more trinkle out, so. Leading to widespread speculation that the clique had never been about friendship, but about cold, hard cash. There's a lot of speculation that Jeffrey had tried to help them start their own brands and then had screwed them over. We don't really know the truth. A really, really hard part for me was kind of navigating who was there for the right reasons, who wanted to really be my friend and get to know me for who I am, or who wants to be there because they want to do a collab on my channel and grow their own presence. You'll never really know. Manny, Gabriel, Nikita, and Laura Lee have never commented publicly on what caused the rift with Star but they were not the only friends of Jeffrey to drop the beauty guru. On July 21st, 2016, Kat Von D publicly ended her friendship with Star, posting a video in which she called the makeup superstar a bully and a monster. The Jeffrey that he is now is like this monster, this big, like, attention-seeking, fame-desiring, money-driven monster that I want no part in. In the video, Von D claimed that Jeffree Star had refused to pay her artist friend, BJ Betts, after Betts designed several preliminary logo ideas for Star's makeup line. This was the preliminary sketch for the logo that Jeffree uses now. This is what BJ wrote. He didn't need me anymore after that. He had the artwork already. And uh, that's when he just stopped calling him. Star wasted no time in clapping back, releasing his video response a few days later, titled, Dear Cat Von D. He, meaning BJ, never did artwork for me, and we passed on using him. He did start an idea, but he did not design my entire packaging. He did take some responsibility for some of it, he denied some of it, and then he had also made the claim that he didn't understand where a lot of it was coming from. It really saddened me because there were so many things that were not true in the video. Cat. I have never judged your character online. I have never said one bad thing about you, and I don't plan to now. Kat's YouTube subscribers quickly went into investigation mode, digging up numerous videos from Star's MySpace days where the beauty influencer appeared to make racist comments and jokes. Old clips of him using the N-word and other derogatory terms began to circulate. Shut up, you bitch. He told one black woman that he wanted to splash battery acid in her face. Well, maybe if she wasn't wearing the wrong foundation color, I wouldn't have to splash no battery acid. I wanted to lighten her skin tone, girl. And he said that was a comedic sketch. It's not funny. But the MySpace videos weren't the only receipts that came to light. Star's former hairstylist David Anthony Munoz shared screenshots of text exchanges he claimed were between him and Star, where Star used the N-word and referred to Jackie as a gorilla. Jackie publicly addressed these remarks on Twitter and basically said that she and the rest of the YouTube audience should not and will not make excuses for Jeffree Star's past and continued racist behavior. I'm not buying Jeffree Star 
cosmetics. I just have a deep issue with the anti-black like comments and things that have been made publicly. She was one of the first very large influencers to publicly say she's not supporting Jeffree Star anymore because of his racism. She was very vocal about it. It's just important to me that people know this is what I stand for, this is what I don't tolerate, this is what I don't accept, and it's gonna stay that way. I appeared in Jeffrey's campaign. He had a collaboration with one of his brands that he worked with. People were like, oh my goodness, he's racist. His followers would be like, no, no, he's not. He's friends with Cameron. That doesn't cancel out someone's racism. Okay, I'm being used for the wrong reasons. For many fans and creators, Jeffree Star had transformed a platform that had once celebrated beauty into a very ugly space. On June 20th, 2017, Starr took to his YouTube channel to deny the accusations in a video titled Racism, which racked up 5 million views. A lot of stuff from my past constantly gets dragged up, and those videos were 12 years ago. I don't know who that person was. As the controversy continued to swirl for nearly a year, subscribers and fellow beauty gurus wondered if the scandal would mark the end of Jeffree Star. Many YouTubers who find themselves in controversy or a scandal would say that they were joking or they were just messing around, but the YouTube audience is hip to that now. They're hip to these excuses. The person that said those horrible, vile things, that person was depressed, that person was just angry at the world, that person felt like they were not accepted. Does that make it okay? Absolutely not. Coming up. He cried, he talked about his days being abused, and of course that tugs on anyone's like heartstrings. And later, another superstar influencer lands on the hot seat. Tati accused James Charles of very, very bad behavior. People were shocked. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are ya? After a meteoric rise to the very pinnacle of YouTube success, in June 2017, beauty guru Jeffree Star was facing a potentially career-crushing scandal, accused of posting racist content. Shut up, you bitch. Star denied the accusations in a YouTube video response. He also turned to YouTube megastar Shane Dawson to help save his brand. Dawson was a hugely successful YouTuber with tens of millions of followers who started out posting comedy videos in 2005. I'm really embarrassed for what I'm about to do. Ow, ow, ow. I just broke my chair. I was not expecting to do that. In 2017, Dawson transitioned into doing long-form documentary-style profiles of the platform's most polarizing celebrities, which garnered millions of views. Oh my god, you're like my Dr. Phil for the day. Dr. Shane. Ooh, that's a scary thought. <laughs> he was doing this very long form, in-depth analysis on these people. Oh my God, hi! A lot of influencers trusted him and wanted to do these types of things with him. I want to live a day in your life, okay. and I want it to be real. Likely recognizing a juicy story and the potential of monetizing millions of views, on August 1st, 2018, Shane Dawson dropped part one of his three-part docuseries, The Secret World of Jeffree Star, giving viewers an intimate look inside the demonized influencer's life. Oh, wow. It quickly amassed more than 49 million views. People were so excited because the key person in a lot of this drama is Jeffree Star. Let's see behind the scenes. Yeah, what I said was racist. Yeah but I wasn't saying it to a person of color. I was saying a horrible, offensive word to cut back at someone calling me something awful. He cried, he talked about his days as a sex worker, his days being abused, and of course that tugs on anyone's heartstrings. With my ex-friends, people still don't really know what went on. When I only loved and cared about all these people and boosted them up and gave them all my connections, and I'm still the bad guy. Subscribers appeared to forgive Jeffree Star after the release of the Shane Dawson series. But Star's former clique were less impressed with the confessional series and wasted no time clapping back. On August 12, 2018, the group launched the first salvo in an epic beauty battle that would later be dubbed Dramageddon 1. After Shane Dawson's docuseries came out on Jeffree Star, Manny 
Laura, Nikita, and Gabriel posted a picture and they're all flipping off the camera. Gabriel took it upon himself to tweet it out with the caption that the bitch is bitter because we're better without him. Dramageddon is the ultimate cautionary tale for the digital age because it really shows what can happen when friendship, gossip, and when money is all mixed together with secrets and lies. The next bomb dropped when Gabriel Zamora took to Twitter to remind fans of Star's past racism. Star subscribers took up the fight, ruthlessly going after Jeffrey's detractors for the tweeted photo and racist accusations being made against their idol. People started digging through these influencers' past and found out they're not angels. Laura Lee's past and things that she had tweeted out that were racially insensitive had came out. Racist tweets came out from Nikita Dragon and Gabriel Zamora. People were accusing Manny MUA of being a social climber. They were losing subscribers by the thousands. As Star's zealous followers came after them, the beauty quartet began to lose an alarming number of subscribers. People were doing live views of their social blades to show their sub counts just decreasing. Lee took the biggest hit for her racist tweets. Makeup retailer Ulta announced they would no longer be stocking Lee's makeup line. And Lee lost major sponsorships with BoxyCharm, ColourPop, and Morphe. She was probably making six figures a month just from using a Morphe code. So that hit alone took so much from her. It became instantly clear that their attack on Star had seriously backfired and the beauty gurus scrambled to do damage control. Though she only lost 2,000 subscribers, Nikita Dragon was the first to speak out, tweeting an apology on August 15, 2018. Manny, Laura, and Gabriel raced to prep apology videos as their subscriber counts continued to drop by tens of thousands. The first apology that I owe is to y'all, my audience. The second apology that I owe is for an old tweet of mine that resurfaced from 2012. It was ignorant and it was stupid and it didn't come from hate. This video was 45 minutes long. There were no edits and he basically just said everything he was thinking unfiltered. And the third apology that I do owe on camera is to Jeffrey. What I did wasn't intended to be bullying, but I know now that it came across like that. In the video, Zamora also publicly ended his friendship with Manny MUA, claiming that Manny had filled his head with lies about Jeffree Star. There's a certain individual that I do need to cut out of my life because it's always just been toxic, and that's Manny. Zamora's apology for his past racist comments unearthed by Star's fans appeared to win back some followers, but not all of the apology videos from the other beauty gurus proved effective. After losing almost half a million followers, Laura Lee dropped her video on August 20th, 2018, tearfully expressing regret for her past racist tweets. It did not go over well. Laura Lee's apology of manipulation, like that was 101, I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Hardest, hardest, hardest things I've ever done. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for disappointing you. Fighting back fake tears is the ultimate way to fail and sink an apology video. Cry or don't cry, pushing the tears is insulting. Laura Lee pulled the first video off her channel and released a second video where she took responsibility for her actions. Many MUA's apology video hit the platform on August 22, 2018. In it, he apologized to his friends for acting shady and to Jeffree Star for the way their friendship fizzled out. Would not be where, where I am today without Jeffree. If I can go back and fix things with Jeffree, I would. You're having, you know, millions of people watching you. If you make a mistake, then they're gonna pounce on you. And it's like, oh my gosh, like I didn't mean to do this. I'm not a bad person. I f up. But Manny's apology to Jeffrey and his other friends wasn't enough to save him from being canceled. I got horrible messages. I got death threats. I got kill yourself comments. I lost like literally hundreds of thousands of followers. And even now I'm like gaining some, but I lose some, gain some, lose some. I'm not what I was back in the day. 
When you're a YouTuber, what people don't realize is that your income is very fickle. If your views are lower for a month, brands are not going to pay you as much. I would wager they lost millions, <laughs> millions of dollars. Not every influencer involved in Dramageddon 1 was held to the same standards. Jeffree Star emerged unscathed. Jeffree doesn't get canceled because he's known for being a mess, so I think it kind of depends on how you present yourself. Jeffree Star escaped Dramageddon 1 like nothing was wrong. He came out looking like the angel, and his friends came out looking like these terrible, backstabbing friends. Coming up... James Charles basically promoted her competition when supposedly they were best friends. And later... Fame, power, and a fat bank account will change almost anyone. By late 2018, the YouTube beauty community's first major drama, Dramageddon 1, had left four influencers scrambling to hold on to their empires, while Jeffree Star continued to rule the platform. But it wasn't long before a second drama unfolded between Star's newfound friends, top beauty influencers James Charles and Tati Westbrook. Tati Westbrook was definitely known as the unproblematic kind of drugstore beauty guru who just kind of did her thing and, you know, talked about the makeup. Westbrook fell in love with makeup and beauty as a child actress. She later put those self-taught makeup skills to work as a freelance makeup artist. Tati launched her Glam Life Guru YouTube channel in 2010 and quickly grew from a few hundred followers to nearly 9 million. This is such an easy, get you out the door fast, no frills makeup routine. She just had this innocence about her. In a lot of her fans' eyes, she could do no wrong. Tati Westbrook, pre-Dramageddon, was known as kind of the mom of YouTube. In December of 2017, Tati's maternal instincts prompted her to mentor then 18-year-old up-and-coming influencer, James Charles. Charles was a fan of Westbrook's and contacted her through her DMs as he was entering the YouTube beauty space. All right, guys, we are back. It is many hours later, and obviously I don't have any of the lip stuff on my lips anymore, but I do have a special guest. Hi, sisters. <laughs> when she had James Charles on her channel, you could see like she wanted the best for this kid, and she would do anything for him. I feel like I'm actually making James um, a little bit nervous because <laughs> I don't let anybody do my makeup ever. Listen, <laughs> listen sister, am I nervous? Yes. Am I gonna kill it though? Yes. Maybe. Yes. No, you're <laughs> we'll gonna see. kill it. You're gonna kill it. And I think for Tati, it was also a way to pull a younger audience not only to her channel, but to also have her older viewers be able to go and see James Charles. It was a way for them to collab their audiences. At the time, Tati Westbrook was also friends with Jeffree Star who seemed eager to lend a hand in mentoring James Charles. Hi, Hi sisters. sisters, how, how are, are ya? <laughs> All right, <laughs> now James Charles is back. Hi, baby. Hey, I remember Jeffree Star telling me at the time that James Charles was such a good kid. We need to just give him some guidance. I'm trying my best to help him. I know Tati's trying her best. Thanks to the guidance from makeup titans Tati and Jeffree, James Charles was quickly becoming the new prince of YouTube beauty. Charles amassed over 10 million subscribers on YouTube and launched an eyeshadow palette in collaboration with Morphe Cosmetics, making the teenager a millionaire. But as James's star was rising, behind the scenes, rivalry was starting to grow. Something that you will see a lot in the YouTube community is just backstabbing and you can think that you are the best of friends and then you're just not. There's a fine line between loyalty and money and I think that these YouTubers go from friends and followers and Instagram buddies to becoming competitors in this market space. When Tati launched her own brand, Halo Beauty, she didn't get the support from her friend James Charles that she was hoping for. James Charles went to Coachella in 2019 and apparently needed some sort of VIP experience because he was getting mobbed by fans. So he reached out to Sugar Bear Hair. Sugar Bear Hair 
gave him the VIP tickets in exchange for posting an Instagram story. So he posted the story, not really thinking anything of it. This was a direct competitor to Halo Beauty. So he basically promoted her competition when supposedly they were best friends. It was rumored that James Charles had reached out to Tati via text message to explain his side of the story. But in Tati's eyes, the damage was already done. Tati, after James posted that story, went on her Instagram live and was very upset. She was crying, she was talking about how a friend had just betrayed her trust, how she was sick of doing things for other people when they wouldn't do anything in return. Then, on May 10th, 2019, supposedly at the urging of Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson, Tati posted a video titled, Bye Sister, in which she called 19-year-old James Charles a shady opportunist who made inappropriate overtures to straight men. It marked the beginning of YouTube's second epic beauty battle, Dramageddon 2. There's so much going on with James Charles right now that I do not support, that I do not agree with. This is not about money. You were talking in detail about things you wanted to do to the waiter. And when I said, James, he's straight, your response was, doesn't matter, I'm a celebrity. So freaking gross. Oh my God, you tried to trick a straight man into thinking he's gay yet again. Coming up, James Charles fights back. Everything that I was doing was always consensual between both me and the boy, and I had receipts to back it up. In May of 2019, Tati Westbrook released her bi sister video ending her friendship with James Charles after he posted an Instagram story promoting the direct competition to her Halo Beauty vitamin line, Sugar Bear Hair. In the video, Tati accused the 19 year old beauty influencer of some very shady behavior. You know, it's really disgusting to manipulate someone's sexuality. You are using your fame, your power, your money to play with people's emotions. She accused James Charles of very, very bad behavior, predatory behavior. And I think people were shocked. And you had never seen Tati talk like that. I finally have had enough. After the release of Bye Sister, James Charles immediately denied claims of any predatory behavior. But the effect on his YouTube following was immediate and devastating. He was losing millions millions of subscribers and to this very day nobody has lost the amount of subscribers in that amount of time that james charles had on youtube it was like a record everybody loves a good misery story i'm not gonna lie people love to see somebody get dragged people like participating in that what i would hope that people keep in mind when it comes to saying horrible things to other people online is that they're a human being it's not just they're an influencer with like a screen in front of them it's about someone who has real emotions real feelings, that has real battles that they go through. Conspiracy theories abounded on YouTube about why Tati would go after her former mentee. Many drama channels speculated that Tati and Jeffrey were jealous of James Charles' success, motivating them to turn on the influencer they had once mentored. It all made sense at the time. You had this huge, young, young kid completely passing their fan base up. And I honestly think at the time, they couldn't handle it. Narcissism was not gonna let this kid just pass them by. Within days, Jeffree Star took to Twitter, claiming that everything Tati had said about James Charles was true. After losing 2.6 million subscribers following by Sister, on May 18th, James Charles posted a response video no More Lies, in which he denied that anything inappropriate had happened between him and the waiter in Seattle. Everything that I was doing was always consensual between both me and the boy, and I had receipts to back it up. In this video, he basically explained his side of the story. I have never, ever tried to manipulate somebody's sexuality, including his, point blank period. Did he get maybe a small portion of his reputation back? Absolutely. To deal with the, the pain and anxiety of what it feels like to have millions and millions of people attacking you at one time, it messed me up. James was able to rebound, not only winning back the subscribers he'd lost, 
but gaining 8 million new ones along the way. But James was not the only influencer impacted by Dramageddon 2. Fans were really disappointed that not only was Tati involved in this drama, but they were also really disappointed at the way that things played out. The day after James Charles posted No More Lies, Jeffree Star released a video of his own, Never Doing This Again, to try and save face after the beauty community called Star out for his part in the drama. Hello, everybody. The last few weeks in the beauty community and in some of our personal lives have been very insane. In the video, Star finally admitted that the accusations he had leveled against James Charles were based on nothing more than rumors. There were things being told to me that were never proven. Um, there was a lot of rumors, and sadly, I let that get to me. Should I have let other people get in my head and sway my opinion about someone? No. That's my problem. He accused Jame of being a predator with no facts, with no police report, with no investigation, with nothing. After Jeffree Star apologized for accusing James Charles without tangible evidence, fans slammed Tati Westbrook for spreading rumors about her former friend and mentee, James Charles. Westbrook subsequently vanished from YouTube for almost a year. Then, on June 30th, 2020, the beauty guru came back to post a 40-minute explanation video, Breaking My Silence. While I was definitely upset that he had accepted a sponsorship from the biggest rival to my brand, Halo Beauty, I did not make my video because of vitamins. Tati explained everything that had happened during Dramageddon 2 and basically, in a nutshell, put the blame entirely on Jeffree Star. I made it as a result of all of the poisonous lies that were fed to me by Jeffree Star. I've lost over a year of my life terrified of social media and terrified of speaking up against the people that used, coerced, and manipulated me into uploading my video in May of last year. You found out that while Tati was not on YouTube, she had apologized to James, they had spoken, and in fact, they had traded messages from Jeffree Star and kind of saw some stuff that looked shady. In the video, Tati also apologized to Jackie Ina for not cutting ties with Star after he referred to her using derogatory terms. Jackie, I'm sorry that I did not do the right thing and walk away from him then. I should have not been blind to the reasons behind the accusations of his racism. I shouldn't have defended him, and I regret any of the pain that I may have caused you. YouTube fans and drama channels quickly revived the conspiracy theory that Jeffree Star had masterminded the attempt to take down James Charles because he was jealous of the young beauty guru's success. The online beauty community eagerly awaited Star's clapback, but Jeffree remained uncharacteristically silent. He normally is the first person to jump on every accusation and say what he's actually thinking, but he said nothing. But then about a month later, conveniently right before he had a makeup release, he decided to post this video. I've come to a lot of realizations and it's been really important to actually understand everything that I was a part of, that I did wrong, um, and really start a new chapter for myself. Coming up. Morphe had came forward and made a statement that they were going to be dropping Jeffree Star Cosmetics. By the summer of 2020, Tati Westbrook and James Charles were mired in the YouTube beauty scandal known as Dramageddon 2. Westbrook dropped the bombshell that she had ended her friendship with Charles at the urging of beauty tie-in Jeffree Star, claiming Star and YouTube mega influencer Shane Dawson had both pressured her into posting her bi sister video. James, I apologize for uploading that video. I should have known better than to fall for their lies and manipulation. Other beauty influencers quickly moved to denounce Star, demanding that top beauty brand Morphe cut ties with Jeffrey. On July 10th, Morphe released a statement on their Instagram account. Morphe had came forward and made a statement that they were going to be dropping Jeffrey Star from Morphe, so they would no longer be having any type of affiliation with retail sales of Jeffrey Star Cosmetics. Jeffree Star Cosmetics responded on their Instagram account, stating that the company was shocked and saddened by the decision of their former retail partner, assuring fans that they had an incredible remainder of 2020 planned. 
We see Jeffree Star continuing to be Jeffree Star, continuing to be this polarizing, controversial individual on the platform. A week later, Jeffree Star uploaded a video titled, Doing What's Right. I've been silent for a very long time. I know that's very rare for me. Now in the past, I've been very guilty of speaking out of anger, out of frustration, out of my emotions. I'm so quick to grab my phone and just say whatever is on my mind in that moment without ever really thinking the ramifications of my words. He addressed multiple controversies that he's been part of and acknowledging his involvement and participation in many of these controversies. I'm really reflecting on my behavior and mine alone. He also referenced the Black Lives Matter movement and noted that we have more important things to fight about than makeup and beauty. It has been a very crazy year and I think that James and myself and anyone involved would agree with me that there are way bigger issues happening on this planet. This was at the time right after George Floyd was murdered and there was a lot of public discourse around Black Lives Matter. And Jeffree Star took that, took that movement that was going on and said, I'm going to flip the script. Breonna Taylor still has no justice. Black trans women are being murdered every day and the news is silent. And including myself, it's really time to reflect on the big picture. And I thought, of course, surely, if he is talking about the Black Lives Matter movement, he has put links to donate. And you go to the description box and it's completely empty. There was nothing. He spoke about those things without directing anybody to a point of change. As a black woman, I agree that his allyship in that video was very performative. I feel like you could see right through it. He's always proven that he is intolerant and he is not this accountable person that he portrays in these apology videos time and time again. Mwah. Bye, guys. People knew negative content was going to instantly get more views. People don't care about the makeup and the demos and the, the how-tos as much anymore as they do about the tea or seeing someone get dragged. But while the simpler days of the YouTube beauty community have been overshadowed by Dramageddon 1 and 2, many influencers are hopeful that a return to what inspired the creation of the online beauty community in the first place is still possible. It's literally the biggest contradiction to what YouTube began as, like real, raw, authentic, and beauty community went and made it fake and dramatic. I think there's a lot of drama fatigue that's come along with recent years. The platform has definitely changed. I think people are growing in different ways and finding different ways that aren't necessarily drama to become super relevant. At the end of the day, influencers are the only ones that can hold themselves truly accountable. I would just love to see a lot more acceptance, just a lot more grace. I'd like to see more of that. In spite of painful missteps and growing pains, positive things have come out of the beauty space on YouTube, which will live on long after drama get in fades. You would have never seen humongous creators back in the day that were male or who had beards or who were black influencers, plus size influencers, you know, trans influencers in the beauty space. There's so much beauty in the world and it's like about showing it. So really using your platform for good is like the most important thing to me now. And smoky eyes with glitter, of course, on top. You can't, you can't get rid of that.